It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brainerd Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have a privilege of interviewing the Marion University's head men's ice hockey coach on the Division II, Chris Fredgerson. How are you doing today? Good, Brandon. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to get started in coaching in college ice hockey? Um, it just kind of came out of the blue one time. Um, I was actually working uh, landscaping as, as a summer job, you know, um, right after college and didn't really have a steady job. And then uh, Jason Bartelt, who is the athletic director at the time at Marion, um, reached out to me because he knew I was in the area. And I'd say that was probably August when school started about three weeks later. And he asked me if I wanted to take the position. And um, being an alumni at Marion, I absolutely wanted to take it. What was that experience like for you playing at Marion as a collegiate ice hockey player? Uh, best four years of my life. Um I loved it. I still talk to um, a lot of my buddies from, you know, those teams uh, to this day. And, um, you know, like I said, absolutely loved it. I love the camaraderie that we had as, um, you know, not only athletes, but, you know, off the ice as uh, really good friends. And like I said, we still talk to this day. So yeah, best four years of my life here. What was that experience like for you getting to put on that shirt, ice hockey sweater for them and representing them? Um, it was awesome. It was, I ha had a, you know, non-traditional um, journey to get to college hockey. I, I was a walk-on. I wasn't um, recruited at that time. Um, I had some buddies on the team already, so I kind of reached out to the coach. Um, you know, he said, like, here's here's the steps that you need to take to make the team. Uh, did a really good, you know, off season at that time. And, uh, you know, uh, got on campus, met all the hockey guys. Like I said, I had some buddies, so it was kind of like an easy transition where I already knew them and then um, did kind of like a soft tryout, made the team and as a third string goalie. And, um, you know, four years later, I got my degree here. So it was, it was, it was a great experience. Like I said, um, uh, I wanted my goal as a player was to play college hockey and to finally, you know, put on a, a college sweater, like you said, especially Marion, um, it was, it was kind of like my goal was reached and, um, just to kind of constantly work hard every year. For you, what were some of your biggest playing accomplishments? Um, like I said, I was a third string goalie, so I didn't really play a whole lot, but, um, I was kind of like that, uh, the leader in the locker room. Um, I, you know, I was, I was going to practice every day, knowing that I wasn't really going to play on the weekend. So I think the guys really respected me in that point. Um, I was kind of like a glue guy on and off the ice. So, um, I didn't have a letter on my chest, but I, I definitely did see myself as as a guy that was, you know, the locker room guy, making sure everything was going good with the boys and having some fun in the locker room for sure. But, um, you know, I think I got that respect from the guys knowing that, you know, like I said, I wasn't going to play a whole lot um, during the season. And um, when I did get to play on senior night for the last two minutes, I think uh, it was a very emotional, not only for myself, but a lot of my teammates. How is that transition like for you going from being a player to getting into coaching and coaching at your alma mater? Um, I think it was it was an easy transition. Uh, like I said, I was probably around 27 at the time, um, years old. So uh, there was a, a player, a couple of players on my team that are around 23 years old. So not far age difference, but um, getting hired at Marion, it was, like I said, easy transition. I didn't really, you know, had to study the campus tours of where the buildings were I already knew where it was so it was an easy selling point and um getting to that point of my college coaching career just starting uh kind of thrown into the fire like I said three weeks before school starts so I had to you know learn a lot of things quick outside of you know uh the Marion things I already knew but um I, I loved it I I I loved that first year like I said just getting thrown in the fire just um, learning firsthand what I needed to do as a college coach and kind of um, ask other coaching friends uh, questions that I had and had a, had a really good support group. What was it like for you becoming a head coach at the on the JV level for Marion? 
So the, the unique thing is um, when I was a senior at Marion in 2014, the coach at that time, AJ Aiken, was starting the JV program. Um, and being a third string goalie, he, you know, AJ said, hey, let's get you some games at the JV team and um, got to play a couple games. And then, you know, fast forward to 2017, um, I'm the second coach ever hired as, you know, as a full time coach and, you know, kind of coming back, like I said, as my alma mater, but also a team that I played on. So a lot of guys didn't know that and, you know, kind of showed, you know, the, the experience I had there, it was such a good experience for me. And that's kind of the big thing that I, I harp, I harp on my guys. Now it's, it's all about the experience. It's yeah. Wins and losses are great, but in the, in the long run, it's, it's how great of a college experience you had. For you, what was that feeling like getting this step onto that ice that you played on, but now as a coach? It, it was unique. It was, it was cool. Um, you know, uh, I just remember the Friday nights at the blue line family ice center, you know, that we had uh kickstart my heart by Motley Crue was, you know, our, our walk-in song and, um, you know, kind of, uh, playing on that ice is awesome. But then being on the other side of it now as a coach, it's, you still have that competitive drive and, um, you know, you still really want to win and have a great experience for the guys and kind of show them what you had as an experience. And, um, it's, it was, it was a cool, cool experience to get on the other side of, of quote unquote, the ice or the bench, um, at, at, at the blue line. Of course, how was that feeling like for you becoming a head coach on the division two level for your alma mater? Like I said, it was awesome. Um, I, I, it was almost like a dream job for me, like, you know, coming back to my alma mater, um, having four years of, you know, the greatest four years of my life, like I said, and then coming back to be a head uh, college coach and, um, I didn't really have a whole lot of coaching experience at that time. So like I said, being thrown in the fire of kind of learning on my feet and um, it was just, it, it was awesome to come back and just start from where I, where I ended, you know, that chapter of my life as being a college hockey player. Can you talk about, of course, the culture that you've built for Marion for the ice hockey program? So it, the culture is huge. Um, I'd say it was probably two years ago, uh, you know, instead of me telling the guys like, here's our core values that we want to work on. Um, I had the guys, you know, we worked on it as a group of what core values do we want as our culture. And um, we kind of, everyone had like, we had groups and everyone kind of brought up what they thought were some good core values. And I, I kind of, I have them hung up right here, but you know, our core values of, you know, commit to excellence, um, accountability, fortitude, and the biggest thing is brotherhood. Um, you know, I couldn't agree more of what the guys came up with, with those core values. And those are, you know, the core values that we, uh, you know, uh, still uh, hang on to this day. What does a typical game day look like for you as a head coach? So it depends if it's a home and away game, right? So away game, it kind of starts the week of. Um, you know, uh, earlier in the week, like make sure the hotel rooms are booked. I, I do that. And usually I do that in the summertime. Um, but the biggest thing is, you know, the meals, make sure the meals are, are, uh, accounted for before. Um, I remember my first game down in DePaul, I remember ordering pizzas uh, during intermissions and that was just such a hectic time because I really didn't know what to do, but now that you can order ahead of time is super easy for us coaches, but, uh, you know, make sure the guys are fed after the games, um, you know, and make sure when we get to the rink, the guys have their tape, you know, they have their sticks accounted for. If they only have one stick, hey, you need a backup stick. Um, making sure the jerseys are washed. That was a big thing with, I was doing a couple of years ago, but this year I wanted to make sure to give the guys some responsibility and um, to wash jerseys. So we had a couple guys do uh, washing jerseys this year. So um, making sure everything is packed on the bus, you know, everyone's accounted for and then going out to the away game. But then uh, home game a little different, um, you know, social media and I do the social social media as well. So, you know, doing a game day post um, and then it's kind of easier, you know, with the home games. So um, I usually get there two hours beforehand to make sure everything is 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 good to go for game time. A lot of the guys show up two and a half hours, um, you know, before a game. So the same thing, make sure they got their sticks. Uh, do we got tape? Um, and then, you know, get the jerseys hung up and then, um, you know, set the lineup, um, get the game pucks frozen. A lot of guys, a lot of people don't realize that you, if you have frozen pucks, they don't usually, um, you know, they stay a little more flat or bouncing or not bouncing around on the ice more, but make sure those are put in the freezer. Um, and then, you know, 
kind of just waiting to go meet the head coach when they show up, you know, introduce yourself if you don't know them already and um, make sure like, Hey, we're going on at this time for warm up. We'll have a cut with the Zamboni and then uh, line up national war or national uh, anthem and then puck drop just so they kind of know our protocol. And then, then it's a uh, puck drop. Of course, what does that away game atmosphere look like going away? Uh, it's, it, it's sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's uh, intimidating. Uh, you know, when we go to say Lindenwood, you know, they're a nationally ranked team every year. Um, it's a very cool atmosphere to play. Um, but, you know, a lot of the guys, you know, they know uh, our strength of schedule and they know that going to Lindenwood, it's always going to be a battle. Um, the past couple of years, Concordia has been really good in our conference. So, um, you know, the, not only do I tell them that it's going to be, you know, a tough matchup, but I think, you know, the, the returners, you know, kind of tell the the freshmen and everyone know that like, Hey, this is going to be a, a tough matchup this weekend for us. But uh, the guys know that, and they're, they're prepared for it every uh, day of practice and, and uh, for the games as well. Who are some of the teams in your conference that you compete against each week? So our conference, we're in the Northern collegiate hockey league. So we have to play these games against them. And um, it has been, uh, the, the strength of schedule has been really good with our conference. So like I said, Concordia, they've been uh, past couple of years have been really good. Um, DePaul uh, down in Illinois, they're nationally or they're in our uh, conference and they're uh, centrally ranked uh, Marquette down in Milwaukee. Um, and then we have Aurora uh, and then us. So like we have a really good conference with a really good strength of schedule. And then um uh, getting with the other uh, side of it with the non-conference games, you know, we play our linen woods, you know, a lot of the times or uh, every four years, we like to go down to Florida Gulf coast and play them. Um, they're, they're uh, nationally ranked every year. So um, not only do we have a really uh, 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 conference strength, of schedule is really good, but our non-conference is as good as well. What is that home game atmosphere like in your arena when you play teams like DePaul? It's intense. So uh, with the family or Fondy Blue Line, uh, we have two rinks. So we have rink A, which is Olympic size sheet. And then um, we have rink B, which is an NHL size sheet. That's where we play a lot of our games. Um, it, it's kind of a, a small, uh, uh, small feel to it, right? So um, we do have a good uh, amount of fans that show up. We have some uh, lacrosse guys on our team and also some of our guys that go play lacrosse. So we get some of the lacrosse guys that come out and uh, get a little bit rowdy for us, which we like. And um, it, we we usually do have a pretty good home record. Then that's kind of like the whole mice that, that we want. Right. But, um, you know, we know DePaul, it's always going to be a battle and Concordia. And then when we have Lindenwood coming up next year, it's always it's always good. And we always get a good crowd and uh, they definitely get into it for sure. Of course, what is that weight atmosphere like when going to teams like Lindenwood? Uh, like I said, it's it's intimidating, but in the same sense, like the guys, we'd rather have those close battles and tough battles rather than beating teams 11 to two or whatever it is, you know, so um, I like those as a coach too. it gets you more act, you know, um, active in, in the in the bench area, but, um, you know, going to Lindenwood. We played an outdoor, two outdoor games this year, um, one against them and one against Concordia. Like I said, Lindenwood has a really nice um, set up where they have indoor and an outdoor rink. And um, it was just like a really good experience for us. But like I said, the boys know when we play Lindenwood, it's it's intimidating. And but like I said, they, they usually rise to the occasion playing against them. As a head coach, what is it like having a program like a Division two program along with having a Division three program at the school, too? It's good. It's it's like a feeder system. So uh, usually during the um, start of school, we have a tryout period. Um, you know, we know what coming in, what D2 guys are, but we also want to see how some of the D3 guys did as well for their uh, workouts in the summertime. So we do a tryout and um, we brought up guys, um, you know, uh, during that tryout period to start the season. And Sometimes we 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 put down some D two guys on the D three level as well, but um, you know during the year um, there's some we have guys that you know during the year like at second semester that we we bring up that how well they're doing out the D three level and um, it, like we said before the interview it's kind of like a feeder system and it's nice to have and it's a very unique situation that a lot of schools uh, can't really say that they have. What does that recruitment process look like for those prospective student athletes looking to play collegiate ice hockey? Um, 
reach out to coaches, I'd say is, is the biggest thing. I know uh, advisors is another thing that players are having. Um, my, my thing that a lot of time I tell high school players around the area or even um, some junior guys, like, you know, how do they want to get looked at? If you're good enough, coaches will find you, you know? So, um, but once again, like be proactive, reach out to coaches, like have a hockey resume set up for yourself already and have some highlight tape, a couple clips. Like it doesn't have to be 20 minutes of you playing hockey, like, you know, show, show some goals, show some, you know, uh, some D zone coverage stuff, your four check. Like a lot of the times the players just show like goals and things like that. Yeah, that's great. But we want to see the other side of the puck, the D side of the puck. But um, like I said, reach out to the coaches, be proactive and, uh, you know, you know, get, get your name out to coaches is, is the biggest thing. As a head coach, what do you look at in those prospective student athletes when out on the road recruiting? Um, I'd say the biggest thing is, can you skate? Uh, you know, you could be a really good goal scorer and all that, but like, how are you getting to the puck? Are you a good skater? Do you use your edges really well? Um, and then the biggest thing is, how are you with your teammates? I ask coaches, like, how are the, how is this John Doe with, you know, with his teammates? And if the coach is kind of like, uh, I don't know, like, that's kind of a red flag. But, um, but a lot of the times it's, it's, it's seeing how good of a teammate they are watching them on the bench. Are they proactive with their teammates? Are they just kind of by themselves and just, you know, worried about themselves? Like, that's a big thing that I'd say a lot of the college coaches, myself, are are watching, you know, not only on the ice, but like what they're doing on the bench as well. As a head coach, what is it like seeing your players fall in love with the ice rink that you play in? It, I, I think it's awesome. Like I said, I, I love my time, you know, playing at the blue line. And I think the guys do like it too. I, it's I hear from a lot of coaches, it's one of the coldest rinks they've ever played in. And I think that comes back to our home ice advantage. But, um, you know, it, it's a unique place to play. And, you know, there's times where we have our Marion showcase where, you know, we get to go play on the Olympic size sheet on rink A. But, you know, it's always good to have, um, you know, the NHL size sheet too, where a lot of uh, teams play a lot of their games on. Of course, as a head coach, what is it like seeing those freshmen put on that Marion uniform for the first time? I think it's awesome for them. You know, it's it's cool for them to see um, for their their college uh, visit, their first college visit to Marion, where, you know, we go show them, you know, the school. Then we take them to the rink and show them the jersey and, you know, just to, the different types of jerseys we have. This year we got a third jersey that was donated to us. So um, that's kind of part of the recruiting plan. But, you know, there's times where, you know, the parents are with them. They're like, hey, like, like can I put on a jersey and take a picture? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Like, this is a goal for you to, you know, get to this level. Like it was for me myself to play college hockey. And um, it's kind of, it puts me back, you know, when I was their age of just like, it was a great accomplish to find or accomplishment to finally get that uh, college Jersey on. What's it like seeing those seniors put that Jersey on for the last time? It's, it's emotional. Um, you know, we just had our season end about a week and a half ago and um, we lost at home and that was our, our last, you know, uh, to end the season. And that was the first time we ever had that. And it was, like I said, emotional, this, this senior class, it was my, um, it was the COVID class, you know? So I brought these guys in, you know, during that COVID year and they, you know, they took a gamble to come in to Mary university to Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. And, you know, half of them were Canadian. So like to have an international kid come down during that COVID time, it's, you know, it, it was a huge thing for them to trust me and for them to come down and, you know, have this college experience. And then it's just like, you know, when the season ends, you're in the locker room and we're all sitting there and it's just, like I said, very emotional, but it's all, and it's all because we care, you know, it's comes back to our core value as it, it's a brotherhood. Right. So, um, but like I said, it, it just couldn't be more proud of these guys that I had this year, especially like the, uh, the, the hurdles that they had to do for the, that COVID year. As a head coach, what is it like seeing those players achieve those big milestones in their career, like the first goal score? It's it's awesome. It's it's one of those things where, like, when I was brought in, like, I wanted to make sure, like, let's grab that puck if their first goal score in the ACHA for Marion or, like, their first win as a goalie. Like, the guys are really good at grabbing that puck. They'll come down the line of, of the goal celebration. They'll throw me the puck, and I'll grab it. And then, you know, at the end of the game – put some tape around it. And I was, you know, first ACH a goal, or if it's a win for a goalie, like I said, 
put the date on, what was the score, just so they can kind of keep that in there for a keepsake and just remember like the time or the date they scored and, you know, if it was a win or a loss, just so they can kind of have that, um, you know, and, and keep that for them. Of course, as a head coach, what is it like seeing those players go on and achieve great things in their professional career, whether it's going into the NHL or the ACHL? It, it's awesome to see them, you know, finally, you know, get their their degree at Marion because, you know, hockey is going to end at some point for them. And I tell them it's always good to lean back on their education and their major that or their degree that they got at Marion and um, still talk to a, a good fair amount of uh, of alumni and, you know, making sure that everything's going fine with them. And they reach out to me to see how the guys are doing. So it's always good, um, you know, to keep in touch with the alumni and, you know, getting jobs that they went to school for four years for, and um, it, it's, it's an awesome feeling as a, as a coach, you know, to see that uh, experience pay off for them. What's it like as a head coach seeing those players go on and achieve great things in their coaching career? Um, it's good. It's same thing. Like if, if a lot of the times if guys want to get into coaching career, it's, it's, it's humbling, but it's, I think it's, it's awesome to come have them come back to me. Like, Hey, Freddie, like anything, you know, um, you want to, can I do with my guys if it's youth or high school, whatever it is. And, you know, we talk and you know, I ask them like, how are things going with you with on the ice? Like what different power play setups are you doing or things like that? And, um, you know, it's, it's funny that we have a drill, um, you know, that we, that we do a practice called Vegas. So instead of going to the board and constantly write what it is, I can just say Vegas, boys know what they're doing and, you know, to see a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, the guys that have uh, coaching jobs after, you know, it's, it's them still doing these drills that, you know, they had four years with, it's kind of funny, but it's, it, it's cool at the same point to see them, you know, do this with uh, their, their coaching career. What are some of your future plans with the program moving forward? Um, I think it's always constantly building, right? So um, it's it's one of those things like how can we always get better on and off the ice? Um, a lot of the times it's, you know, uh, scheduling different opponents. So, you know, this year we played Milwaukee School of Engineering for the first time and uh, we got to play them. I think it was like a two o'clock game. So, you know, we drove down and it's only an hour drive. So it's nice. But, you know, we have a good fair amount of uh, Canadians on our team and they've really never been to Milwaukee. So, you know, driving in, you know, down on Water Street and, you know, seeing all the skyscrapers and just seeing a different side of of hockey that some of these guys don't see. It's it's kind of a cool experience, but, um, you know, just like I said, constantly building the program as much as we can and trying to get it as better as we can on and off the ice. What advice would you have those freshmen entering their first year of college ice hockey? Uh, be proactive, um, you know, for your first year of college, it's, uh, you know, have, have a schedule set up and that's what we tell our guys is time manage, right? So make sure you plan out your day. So you have time for school, you have time for lunch, you have time for, um, you know, whatever it is, video games or, you know, hanging out with friends. So you're not overwhelmed with the school aspect because as a freshman, you know, it, it is, it is intimidating and, um, but as long as you have your days planned out, um, you know, then you can have your free time of, you know, let's go watch some Monday night football with the boys down and, you know, get some wings and things like that, where, you know, make sure you have your, your day planned out, like I said, instead of, you know, going out for wings and all of a sudden, oh man, I got to do, you know, my homework and you're up till three o'clock in the morning when we have practice at six thirty in the morning. So, um, like I said, to have, plan out your days is, is the biggest thing for my guys and time managing is, is, is a big, uh, keyword for our guys. What advice would you have those seniors looking to play on the next level, whether it's the NHL, ECHL, or ACHL? Yeah, any any professional hockey, um, we've had it here where guys, it's it's a grind, you know, so um, you're going against a lot of a lot of good talent, right? So, um, you know, if if guys want to do it, they they usually let me know and I'll I'll make some calls to some some coaches, but um, it's, you, you gotta constantly be working hard because that's kind of your, that's your job, right? So guys are getting, you know, paid some amount of money that, you know, want to play hockey. So you gotta be better than them, right? So it's, it's off ice training. It's on ice training. You can't just show up and be like, Hey, I want to play hockey and I want to get paid for it. Well, I don't think you're really going to last long. Right. So as long as you're putting the time and effort that you want to get to the next level and, um, you know, make sure that happens. It's, it's one of those things where you got to put the time in, like I said. 
What advice would you give those future coaches out there looking to become assistant coaches? Um, it's a grind. It's um, it consumes you, but it's all worth it. And that's the biggest thing. It's, it's all about networking. So get into coaching right away, either if it's with your local youth hockey association or your high school team, um, that's what I did when I first started. I, I got with my, um, my, my JV high school team and I was like the second assistant and I, I loved it. I, you know, it, I really didn't get paid a whole lot, but just being with those guys and hanging out with them, is like, this is, this is kind of what I want to do. So, um, you know, reach out to your old coaches and see what they're doing or if they have any, you know, ideas of where you can get on board, um, you know, with coaching, whatever it is. And then, you, you know, you build those friendships and, um, hopefully it gets you to your point where you want to in your coaching career. What advice would you have those coaches looking to coach at their alma mater like you have? Um, keep tabs, you know, see, see what they're doing. Like I, I kind of knew the, the, the coach here, um, you know, and, uh, when, when I got the, when I got the call, I was like, he's leaving. Yeah, for sure. Like I want to take it. So, um, some things they just pop up out of, out of nowhere. Right. So you can, um, you know, you can kind of keep tabs, but, you know, be a good alumni, you know, we have a really good alumni group here at Marion for whatever program it is. So, you know, keep tabs with whoever, and, um, you know, always keep an eye on whatever program it is that, that interests you or whatever that you played with. What advice would you have those head coaches looking to build their own program and build their own legacy? Um, it's, it's not going to be built in year one. Um, that's the biggest thing. When I came in, I had a good group of guys, um, that, you know, built something already, but it took a couple of years. And, you know, after a couple of recruiting classes, it's, it, it, it kind of, it, it got to a point where it was very manageable. You let the guys kind of run the, run the locker room, excuse me. Uh, you know, I remember after my first year coaching, we, we lost to Linenwood in the regional uh, finals. And I remember our captain at the time, Danny Rowe, we're, we're driving back to Fonny and he's just like, coach, like, just get us guys, you know, we had like 15 guys on the bench, like very, very low amount of guys. And, you know, that next year I brought in eight guys in our recruiting class and it kind of, you know, boosted um, not only our type of play, but, you know, just the the type of uh, program that we wanted to build. So, um, you know, like I said, Rome wasn't built in year one, you know, so it takes a couple of years, but it, it's a long grinding process that that's that, you know, it, it's worth it at the end for sure. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find you at on social media along with the program app? So we have a Facebook page. Uh, I believe it's called Marion um, ACHA Division or D2 on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, I believe we just had a TikTok built this year. So I believe it's under the same account, Marion uh, uh, ACHA D2. So um, come check us out and uh, in, uh, yeah. Thank you again, Coach Chris Fredrickson, for your energy and best of luck in your future at Major Union as the head men's Division Two ice hockey coach. Thanks, Brandon. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Instagram and Brandon Sports Talk Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon. And you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Chris, for your energy and best of luck in your future. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.